Right, welcome to another School of Surgery podcast. I'm here again with Dr. Rajiv Singh from Royal Derby Hospital in the East Midlands of uh, the UK. Um, This is following on from our previous podcast about the normal abdominal plane film. And uh, what we're going to see today is some abnormalities on the abdominal plane film and uh, common things that you see uh, in surgery. And uh, we're going to go through them bit by bit and show the key features of each of these. So thanks very much again for coming, Rajiv. Cheers, John. Basically, what we're going to do um, in plain abdominal film, as we talked in our previous discussion, we're looking at basically bowel gas pattern and extra luminal gas pattern, yeah. calcification and additional opacities. So just to recap. So ABC, additional base, opacities, opacities um, B, bowel gas pattern, both inside and outside the bowel, and C, calcification. calcification. So yes. the ABC thing from the previous podcast to be remembered going through this. Absolutely. Okay. So moving on, this is our first uh, abdominal x-ray so here we can see the bowel gas pattern for B and if you look here there are a couple of just gas filled distended segments of bowel yeah. loops within the upper abdomen okay. and these if, things here yeah okay yeah, so if you look at them these are the like we talked in our last podcast that these continuous closely placed rings going across the bowel. Yep. So these are the plica similunaris or volvili conventis, yep. uh, characterizing small bowel. So this looks like distended gas filled small bowel loop. Okay, and the other thing, it's central as well. That's the other thing you said last time. It's small bowel tends to be central, large bowel around the outside, the periphery of the abdomen. That's correct, yeah. So, and there are a couple of non-specific uh, sigmoid colon in the okay. um, in the pelvis is that distended then that's more that's that's normal as we saw on our range of normal um, bowel gas pattern in the previous session so if you look on this one just zooming in to show how the continuous rings of volvilli are seen going across so they go across there like that all the way across Um, the same patient had a ct scan so we'll see at same patient same levels so if i show you this the upper abdomen and corresponding slide of the CT scan and then lower down here what is remarkable here if you look upper abdomen yes we can see these distended gas fill yeah. segments of small bowel and here in the pelvis or lower abdomen yeah. not much of the bowel gas distension and the reason is is density because these loops are still dilated um, small bowel but have got fluid in them or water in them so because the density is almost similar to soft tissue, it's difficult to yeah. see on so the plane So the important thing on, on, a, on a plane film is you can see differences between tissue densities that show up on the plane film. And so if they're the same, they look the same. Yeah, and this is the just to convey the limitation yeah. of the plane yeah. abdominal film. And so, again, it's what we said last week about history being everything. So if you've got a patient who is uh, has bilious vomiting and uh, hasn't passed any gas or is passing less gas and they've got a distended abdomen signs of small bowel obstruction which is available on another podcast school of surgery um that you would even see in that plane film we still be suspicious and then perhaps go to a ct yes and and here we can see these are the gas fill loops which show up nicely here and then fluid fill segments are difficult on the ct scan at that level we can see some free fluid here which is again reactive fluid most likely secondary to bowel obstruction and in the pelvis these are normal small bowel loops which are like string or collapsed Uh normal caliber so that that's again telling us that there is zone of transition somewhere normal caliber abnormal caliber indicating mechanical small bowel obstruction so there's some there's some it's a bit like it's one of those hose pipes from Tom and Jerry that there's an obstruction somewhere and upstream from there it all gets very distended and down, downstream from there it's normal and collapsed. Very good and analogy. And certainly when you do an operation, when you open up the belly, you, you follow the wide, wide distended bit down and, to you, and, to you, and the collapsed bit and when it, where they meet, that's where the obstruction is going to be. And next film here, same patient had surgery and these are this is the abdominal x-ray post-surgery mm-hmm. and we can see some sutures here from the bowel resection in this area oh, yeah. yes. and that you can see a bit clearer staples staple line yeah. and similarly in the right upper quadrant as well but look at the bowel gas pattern now this is within normal limits now yeah um this is another patient so remembering our a b c again a couple of clips so in the right upper quadrant which are from previous cholecystectomy mm-hmm. and soft tissues if you look here on looking at the soft tissues don't spot anything abnormal and bowel gas pattern looks normal as well yeah and that again goes 
to show the limitation of the plain film. So this patient clinically, we could feel a mass in the right LX fossa. Yeah. So patient went on to have CT scan. You could have also done ultrasound, which could have demonstrated this yeah. pathology nicely. This is the a complex cystic lesion in the right ovary within the yeah. pelvis, which again is difficult to see on this as we talked because this is all about different densities yes. and, and it's difficult to see on this. And I suppose the thing, knowing that that's there now, I can look at the plain film and there's no gas in the right of that fossa, so the, there's something that's occupying that space. And so this is a CT scan yeah. showing the multiceptors. So these are septi in the complex ovarian cyst and that, that's difficult to see on the plain abdominal film. Um, this patient came in with epigastric pain and normally we would have a, a, a abdominal x-ray and a chest x-ray because you're obviously looking for bowel obstruction or bowel perforation. Mm -hmm. So here we can see that normal bowel gas button, nothing straight away jumps out to show that this is abnormal on this yeah. one and no additional opacities, no extra luminal gas. However, this patient also had a erect chest x-ray which shows trace of free air below the diaphragms yeah. on both sides yeah. so we can see it here oh yeah it's a very clearly. good view isn't it yeah. there and there yeah. so, so it's the darker bit and especially free air above the liver or, or a, a loose so you can see both sides of the diaphragm there that's right you can see the liver below that and then there's a darker bit which is hasn't got much tissue in which is, is filled by air and that's what free air looks that's like that's free air and uh, Quite often, if you have very little intra free intraperitoneal air, it's difficult to see on the abdominal x-ray, but that's where the value of erect chest x-ray is. Yeah, okay, and, and anyone that comes in with an acute abdomen should have a supine abdomen, erect chest. Erect chest. Yeah. So this is uh, another patient who is day two post, post uh, laparotomy, mm -hmm. and you can see little free intraperitoneal air below mm. the diaphragm and some basal electrolytic changes at lung basis. Yeah. These are all within normal limits. Yeah. So when you close the abdomen, you close some air in with it, or if you do a laparoscopic case, you have CO2 in there that might take a while to absorb, yeah. but it's, it's not a massive amount of air, often just a small amount of air. So also don't be don't be fooled if you've got a lot of air in there, and particularly if the patient's in well, there's a perforation, yeah, perforated you, viscous. You've got to think about it. Yeah. Yeah. And is there anything else you can see on the chest part of this? Uh, yes, it, um, just uh, as we say that if you spot one abnormality, don't stop. You still have to look around, make sure that you have excluded everything else. Yeah. You've checked all the review areas, other areas. So here we can see a patient uh, has had NG tube put in, and the tip of the NG tube is just in the upper, um, th upper basically trachea. And that's the distal end here. So it which is which is not where we want an NG tube to be. We want it the to G be standing for gastric reposition. Yeah. So uh, just to this as uh, a point to remember how to differentiate between a small bowel and large bowel. Uh, you can see you can find this everywhere. But just just a recap: uh, the diameter. If you look at the small bowel and large bowel, mm -hmm. usually large bowel is more than five centimeters. The small bowel is mainly central. Mm -hmm. Large bowel is peripheral. Bowel markings, we said about uh, the continuous rings, uh, volvuli, and um, incomplete wide placed yep. uh, rings as hostra. Fluid levels, normally many short ones mm -hmm. in the small bowel, few long in the large bowel. And large bowel usually has gas, small bowel, most of the time you don't see yep. it. Yeah, okay. All right. That's very clear, thank you. So this is another patient, so elderly gentleman, 94 years, day one, non-specific abdominal pain, gets a abdominal x-ray and chest x-ray. On this abdominal x-ray, just non-specific bowel gas pattern, doesn't indicate that there is distension, obstruction, uh, but we can see relative paucity of bowel gas within mm. the pelvis. It goes on day two, and you can see there is slightly more prominent what looks like large bowel with these hostra here, yeah. and the location, as we said, peripheral location, so transverse, yeah. Hepatic flexure. Uh, very good flexure. health to there, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. And uh, day four, and it gets more prominent. So it just shows that there is definitely ongoing so a degree of bowel obstruction, what looks like large bowel. Yes. And um, just to show you Hostra again, these are the markings. One, two, three, incomplete rings. Wide gap between the rings, it's not rings, but the lines. Yeah. And compare this with this small bowel. This is upper GI barium follow-through study, just to show you the 
pulvilli uh, conventus of the small bowel. That's normal feathery mucosal pattern yes. of the proximal small bowel. And these are the volvilli. And uh, just to show you again. Oh, that's a lovely picture, yeah. So yeah. quite nicely shown. And those are the valvuli conventes. That's correct. And so this is another patient, portable AB supine film. And here you can see generalized distension of looks like small and large bowel, both the central mm. part is taken up by the small bowel with these volvuli through and through, going through the that lumen and generalized again positive of the bowel gas just little probably in the rectum but not much air distally yeah um, and just to show you same yeah. again it's very nice. the small bowel this is another patient shows similar features like the last one small bowel distension gas filled and there are some some uh, small bowel and large bowel here in the right upper quadrant There's as some well. There's gas in the right side of the colon, isn't there? Yeah, you can see and, the feces outlined there. And in the rectum as well. Yeah. But just to show you the small bowel gas fill, how it looks when it's abnormal. Yeah, yeah. And then um, there are podcasts on small bowel and large bowel obstruction on uh, School of Surgery. If you go to iTunes or Podomatic and subscribe. Um, another abdominal chest x-ray on a uh, elderly lady. Here you can see we have got a viscous, what looks like large bowel, mm. which is quite distended, gas filled. And once again, there is not much air in the rectum here and, and there is emptiness in the right aleph fossa. Yeah. So this this is cecal volvulus where cecum yeah. is twisted along its mesentery and flipped upward. So this is another patient who had um, sigmoid volvulus, which we'll show you a picture in a second, but look at this, the flatus tube and it resolved that's the flatus okay. tube and this is the this is the before picture yeah before the flatus <laughs> yeah, tube okay. and you can see here distended uh, sigmoid here which yeah. is twisted and you can see loss of these uh, distended background um, large bowel uh, proximal large bowel as well and there is little gas some fecal residue in the rectum there and compare this with the coffee bean looks like coffee bean yeah yeah, that's a classic coffee bean sign of a sigmoid volvulus. Sigmoid yeah. volvulus. And then we can we can go back, and we can see the flatus tube that's uh, which is a, the the biggest NG tube or specialised flatus tube you can find. Put lots of jelly in, put a sigmoid a, a sigmoidoscope inside the rectum on the ward, and then gently pass it upwards and stand clear because there is rapid uh, decompression of the obstructive bowel with lots and lots of gas and lots and lots of lipid feces so as you put it in don't forget to stand back uh, this is our another uh, abdominal x-ray so if you look here this is again gas filled central small bowel but check the difference between the previous small bowel mm -hmm. distension which we see uh, we saw and there you saw lots of volvilli conventus yeah. here you can't see anything and this is yeah. distension within normal limits and quite often people who have uh, frequent diarrhea or have got diarrheal episode you yep. do get some gas okay. in the small bowel and and this so this is not abnormal this is a still within normal limits a small bowel the abnormality in fact is in the peripheral large yeah. bowel which if you look from here this is ascending hepatic flexure transverse yeah. and just distally here that's the distal Oh, mm -hmm. and the descending and sigmoid and this is rectum here the abnormality if you look is generalized thickening of the wall yeah. of the colon mm -hmm. and these are the areas which are like thumb printing here yeah so and so, there's loss of a normal haustral pattern as well isn't there yeah that's correct and the the point to remember here is so it's a continuous disease starting from rectum yeah. which is quite a thick wall yeah it's symmetrical i.e involving the mesentric and anti-mesentric borders yeah. of both yeah. so symmetrical starting from rectum yeah. and continuous disease like if we go from here all the way down to or up to cecum yes. there is no normal patch of colon yeah. in between and the small bowel is normal it's and starting it's to sound familiar yeah inflammatory bowel is a but ulcerative colitis yes so then important negative findings no toxic dilatation of the colon yes and no, what, how would you describe how, how big does a colon have to be to be toxic dilatation would you say i think it's uh, nine centimeter for the yeah. transverse colon and yeah. six centimeter for the cecum okay um, and that suggests as impending perforation yes, and 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 here then the other thing will be free gas mm -hmm. so there is no free intraperitoneal air and also quite often these patients when they have got long-standing um, 
inflammatory bowel disease, they develop sacroiliitis. So mm -hmm. if you want to score more marks, we're looking at the sacroiliac joint as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the patient who will need further management by a gastroenterologist or... Yeah, great. Uh, what, what a fantastic extra. Well, thank you very much for um, showing us some common abnormalities in, um, in the abdominal film. Uh, so basically, to summarise, stick to the ABC... And all this has been about B, really, hasn't it? The bowel gas, gas pattern, both the gas inside the lumen of the bowel and the gas outside, outside. the lumen of the bowel, which you probably see under the diaphragm in your ex-chest x-ray. Okay, well, thank you very much thank indeed, you, Dr. Singh. Cheers, thanks.